I finally ended up watching um, the series that everyone's flipping been talking about and absolutely beating my eardrums off of about um, called Squid Game. That's available now on Netflix. I'm sure most of you have heard um, a South Korean series that's fucking phenomenal for the most part. Again, let's kind of just take a step back. Everyone else telling me to watch it, I understood why they said so because it is really good, but it's not as good as they were making it out to be. They were making it out to be like it was white, the wire or Sopranos and shit. It's good, don't get me wrong, but I think because of the the standard in kind of TV programming now is so crap. Whenever a half decent thing comes along, people get so excited that they kind of overpraise it, right? The same thing happened a little bit with Breaking Bad. I felt like, um, what's the thing called? Calling Soul, Catching Soul, whatever his name is, right? People, I think, and even Ozarks, people, I think. I lavish way too much praise on those kind of things because they recognize that that kind of programming doesn't exist anymore on TV for whatever reason. And especially stuff like Squid Game, right? Because, I've, you know, let's not beat around the bush. If this thing was made by, you know, an American company or an English company, they would have interjected so many stupid plot lines into it, loads of intersectional stuff, loads of stuff about rights and like loads of stuff that just doesn't necessarily need to be involved, doesn't need to be put into a series just because they wanted to make a social message and shit. No, just because they wanted to make a political message or something right but sometimes you need to be reminded that you can make great tv and also have a great message that has people talking about many different things has people looking at their own life and what they did and duh, 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 without it being too intersectional and way too thing about kind of you know fighting for gender rights and shit it just doesn't need to have all that stuff just focus on making great stuff and then, of course, you know, casting it amazingly if you can. Maybe if you want to make it diverse, cool. But just focus on the script and the actual, the direction, the, whatever it may be, directing, whatever it may be, the color direct, the, the, the color grading, the shots, um, the composition. Make sure that's amazing. And then all those other messaging points can kind of get sprinkled in later down the line. Because that's one thing um, Squid Game did what that was absolutely phenomenal. Like legitimately one of the more enjoyable things that i've watched i was glued to it watching it kind of the other day uh the day says even if you have watched this courtesy of bbc says even if you haven't watched a show or seen the memes taken over the internet chances are you probably heard of squid game everyone's been talking about it in fact the korean series centered on a brutal survivor game is on its way to beating the regency era of romance bridgington to become the stream platform's biggest original series of all time people watch that that bridgington thing i'll try to watch it again it's probably not for me again look you can only look at me to figure out i'm probably not gonna be a fan of bridgerton but i tried to watch it and it was hot garbage so the fact that that shit was gone there's so much attention from people and this again all mostly korean language um series is also garnering that same level of attention shows you that there's an appetite for really good tv people were just happy to watch bridgerton because i'm guessing it was just you know easy digestible kind of stuff right you know romancy type you know women love all that kind of stuff and dudes are probably caught in you know having to watch it in order to kind of keep their missus company so i get it but god damn it man if a korean if a south korean tv series can take over something like that that kind of resonated and kind of spoke to a lot of people at the same time then you know it's good it continues as while the genre of the show isn't hardly new it's striking visuals relatable characters and disturbing study of human nature has spoken to audiences around the world in squid game a group of 456 people in debt and desperate are lured into the bloodthirsty survival game where they have a chance to walk away with 4.56 billion korean which is the equivalent to 39 million dollars if they win a series of six games the twist if they die if they lose right <laughs> incredible um the games are simple enough. They are childhood games that players grow up playing and the surprising just position of an innocent child's play and innocent deaths has caused the viewers to sit up. People are attracted by the irony that hopeless grown-ups risk their lives to win a kid's game, says Squid Game director Huang dong Hyuk said in an interview. The games are simple and easy so viewers can give much more focus on each character rather than the complex game rules. There's also an element of nostalgia. For example, the Dalong the Dalonga Honeycomb Challenge featured in episode 3 is one of the most it's one of koreans most remember were playing when they were kids yeah that was brutal seeing them having to cut that honeycomb out like oh my god my my heart was beating super hard now i was thinking this is one thing i was thinking a lot about because i remember i was going to make a little topic about it on the podcast but I, I kind of lost the article but there's a lot of people on social a few weeks ago who were kind of laughing at this guy this english dude who was um a he kind of won the lottery and he was basically a builder dude right who kind of you know loved kind of 
wearing gold jewelry big dude beer belly um you know just la a proper lad and he won the lottery and i think he just went and bought like a gold car a gold you know that kind of that kind of um character that kind of episode in, in simpsons where he buys like a gold car and a gold house right he just spent on just crazy shit and i remember the time everyone kind of you know the social media like, um fan business advisors and financial gurus were like oh he should have bought this he should have done that he should have done this right and eventually most of the stuff that this guy said was true he did lose most of his money and i think the recent story that everyone was laughing at was that he'd now have returned back to the building site that he was at previously he'd got gone back to kind of being a quote-unquote laborer and everyone was laughing and saying see that's why people don't shoot and play lottery because you waste all your you know the money's all gone you go back broke again da, da, da. he should have made more investments all this sort of stuff right but i think the reality is in life most of us especially the ones who aren't that ambitious who are not that ambitious who probably aren't that um who don't enjoy taking many risks we're never really going to enjoy or never really going to have the possibility of ever, ever. And again, I'm not counting myself because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a risk taker when it comes to that thing. But I think most people, and again, I'm not really a big believer in everyone should be an entrepreneur and go for their dreams and shit. I think that's kind of bullshit. I think everyone needs to play their position. But I do think that people that kind of judge too much about these things, you have to understand that most people aren't going to ever feel, taste, understand what it means to have that much disposable income at your disposal right that much money like they would never see it they're never going to see six seven eight ten figures on their bank account it's never going to happen so it's hard to judge what somebody should do when you've never actually even held a couple of grand in your hand for longer than two months like it's always kind of gone and been spent on somewhere you've got itchy fingers so imagine if you won the lottery and even after taxes you still got you know 4.5 million just sitting in your account comfy and you come from a general working class background of course you're going to go nuts and do some crazy shit of course you are but i also think isn't that what life is about shouldn't you be allowed to just go crazy and do some nonsense for seven years five years two years however long that money lasts you and then if you have to go back and work a normal job so what you've been you've been working normal jobs for most of your life anyway it's not as if you spent most of your life being rich and you have to go work for a normal job that's when it kind of gets becomes a mind fuck right when you spend the majority of your life being a rich kid and then suddenly you get into adult age you don't have any money you have to kind of get back into working normal work and going to do your own shopping and shit and not having a butler that's going to be a mind but if you spent the majority of your life 10 20 years 30 years being just a regular regular everyday person working a nine to five and then you have a five-year gap where you get to ball out and enjoy your lottery win isn't that far more beneficial than just laboring and kind of waste not wasting your time but essentially just clocking in clocking out at a mundane job that you don't really enjoy there's n I don't see either thing as being better than the other. I just see them being on the same sort of plane, really, of existence. One existence, you get to kind of suspend belief and kind of live in this kind of fairyland and kind of have a bit of arrested development for a couple of years with your wealth. You won a lottery. And one, you get to pretend like you're enjoying life by just clocking in and clocking out and having a couple of holidays per year, maybe going to have a couple of steaks at the Hawks Moor, whatnot. That's not really like you're not really going for anything as well do you know what i mean it's not as if you're going to lose your job anytime soon hopefully god for god willing like these restaurants aren't going to go anywhere anytime soon you're still going to be safe you're going to be stable your kids should be okay for the most part it is what it is um so i i think the great thing about this game is that it did show that as much as obviously it was hurtful i guess for the families attached if somebody that you love goes missing and they just turn up dead or they even turn up dead, they they get incinerated you have no record of what happened to them what their last days were like nothing but you just know they went to try and play this game and they attempt to clear their debts that were crippling enough for them to risk going um to a far-flung island to go play this flipping crazy death game still like I don't know man like just living for the sake of living just so you can say you've lived up until a certain amount of years is that really what living should be like especially if you're not doing it on your own terms especially if you're crippled by debt in the first place why not take the risk why not obviously they're everything else that got involved in it it's a bit dark when you know they have to play them they play them they play each other off you they play them off each other the vips that come in that gets a bit sadistic especially when it gets into that whole you know guy he, he takes one of the butlers back into his flipping fit like yeah i know there's a lot of questionable things in there in general but i think what it sort of addresses and what it kind of exposes the kind of 
game of life itself and the fact that we all kind of believe in these systems that have been created essentially just numbers on the screen that get fuddled around and if you're the right person or you're from a right background you get to fuddle these numbers more you get to go in prison less you get to go in prison more. like all these flipping things that don't make any quite sense that we're not really kind of grappling with kind of black mirror-esque they, they kind of expose on the show it kind of really exposed the entire thing of what people are up to and again the main guy in it is like a complete piece of shit right like he essentially leaves his mum for dead right comes back and she's essentially again like on the floor dying right oh she's already dead i think he's on the floor um he doesn't look after his kid he steals money from his you know mum who looks like she's got many you know looks at what she got she got a fungi foot right that might need to be amputated like terrible people all of them no one comes out of this no one's got any redeeming guys about it. everyone's got a really dodgy crappy past and it's interesting too that there is this link like because you owe a lot of money there's generally other parts of your life that are definitely going to be super chaotic which i'm not sure how true that is because i think a lot of people you know it's not like having student debt or something that you know most of us have this is like people that have like crazy debt like debt like you know in the hundreds and thousands and that it's funny that they kind of equate that with also having other destructive tendencies other kind of really dark shit that you have going on in your life like you've not told anybody about that's the interesting part of it which i don't know if that's true or not if people that have those kind of high debts also have some you know other things going on which i'd assume they would do because you know this is the guy that flipping lied about his mum how much money he needed and then took that money to go bet on the horses and lost it all do you know what i mean like it's just it's I don't know man i don't know but yeah great series overall again slightly overrated in terms of how people are going about it but again i understand because if you're watching ted lasso and you're watching this i get why you're gonna be you know wanking under the table watching it for sure um definitely want to check out so definitely check out um what's i think squid game available now on um on netflix definitely a standout show and as you can see from these headlines at billboard netflix hit record squid um game extends content field rally um netflix shares closed at record high on thursday the latest sign that the wall street optimistic and steady stream of hit shows will keep subscribers coming again this is what all the people this is all the geeks and people that were complaining about star wars under the kathleen kennedy's reign were complaining about like if you actually make good shit and we like it as fans we're going to watch it and talk about it endlessly so just imagine if they just make good shit like this would increase their share prices everyone would get paid well but instead they're all lapped up and obsessed with politics and representation it's just nonsense just make good things cost them well and everyone will be happy instead of trying to shoehorn you know political messages and shit in the made-up world like it's star wars we're gonna say i don't know anyway recent stock gains have been fueled by the rerun return story of debut of well-known titles including the new season of the witcher the sitcom seinfeld and the latest list has been the south korean action drama series squid game whose massive popularity appears to be early indicator of the strong user trends bloomberg intelligence wrote um and then you've got one last one here squid game director reveals more about going yourself man character we don't really see much of him i think we've only seen him two episodes but still brilliant 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 stuff Definitely Definitely check it out if you haven't already. Squid Game available now on Netflix. Definitely one of the better things to watch in a long, long time. Definitely check it out if you haven't already.